and we're joined by former uh, Jamaican midfielder Jamie Lawrence. Good evening, Jamie. Hello, mate. How are you? You okay? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Fantastic. Um, thanks very much for, for coming on the show, Jamie. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, what we want to do is take a look at, uh, obviously, your, your playing career and the uh, so, sort of a brief managerial career you had as well. You spent the, yeah. um, the, the majority of your career at Bradford, uh, and I was reading earlier today yeah. that um, you drew comparisons with the basketball player Dennis Rodman due to multicoloured hair. Yeah, I did. When I was playing and that, I used to dye my hair um, every couple of weeks a different colour. Just had a little bit of interest in the fans and whatever, you know. <laughs> so, Chris Kamara got his wackiness for, from you then? I think I got my wackiness from Chris <laughs> Kamara, to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, I mean, the move to, to to Bradford in '97 was it a was it a hard decision? It was about fifty thousand, I think, Kamara signed you for. Was it a tough decision to yeah, make? Um, to Bradford? It was a, a tough decision at the time, um, at the time because um, Leicester City was established Premiership side at the time, and we'd just come off the back of um, winning the League Cup. So at the time, I was all in an iron, but um, my owner was very frank with me, and he said that he couldn't offer me first team football. Um, all the time, so I took that jump and went to Bradford City, which turned out to be the best decision of my life. Because obviously you played in the Premier League with Bradford as well um, during their yeah. two seasons. I mean, what are your memories of, of playing in the Premier League? Oh, well, obviously, um, at Bradford, it's getting them up into the Premier League, and then the last game of the season, the following season, we had to play Liverpool at home, we had to beat them. They needed to beat us to go into the Champions League and we managed to beat on 1-0, which for Bradford at the time was probably equivalent of winning the Premier League. Yeah, I remember that game quite well. Um, heartbreaking yeah. last game of the season to avoid that on Champions League football. <laughs> well, I'm a Liverpool fan, so <laughs> it was hard to play in that game, but obviously Bradford's where, where my heart lies now. Um, I mean, looking at your career, after... Um, after your time at Bradford, the, the career, your career sort of has um, bits and pieces of different clubs that represented Wigan and Warsaw. When you look back on your career, do you, do you wish you'd spent more time at Bradford? Well, it wasn't my decision to go from Bradford. Um, remember the money warriors and all that at Bradford, they, they had to let me go. They had to get me off the wage bill and all that. I was devastated. Um, when I left, and I, I went on record at the time saying that I wish I never left it. I knew at the time it's probably the wrong move and all that. But um, if it saved the club in the long run, then it turned out to be the right right decision. Looking then to your management career, um, you yeah. managed Ashford Town for, for for two seasons. I mean. Is that something you always wanted to do, was to step the other side of the touchline, put the sheepskin coat on, as they say? Yeah, I don't know about the sheepskin coat. <laughs> Not the Ron Atkinson look, um, though. I, but I've always wanted to manage, and I still want to manage, but the manage, my managerial career at um, Ashford Town left a sour taste in my mouth in the end. That's why I said that I won't do a job now until it's the proper right job. At the time, it probably was the wrong job. Um, I know I'm going to throw it over to Mike because I know Mike's asked our forum members some questions, so I don't want to steal them from him just in case I sort of get ahead. So I'll throw it open to Mike. He's got some questions from our listeners. Hello, Jamie. Um, Hello, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Cheers. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Um, I've just got a couple of questions from um, one of our forum members called Hero. He says, um, whilst playing for Jamaica, you played against a Brazil side containing the original Ronaldo. How special was that game yeah. for you? Right. Well, at the time, they were the world champions of the world and all that as well. And for me to go on the same pitch, especially coming from my background as well, and uh, representing my country against them was like the, probably the pinnacle of my career. Um, the second, oh, that's completely understandable. He was like one of the best players in the world, wasn't he? Probably, he was the best player. Oh, mate, he was. He was, he was, he was I still call him today the real Ronaldo. Mm. Um, and also, he says, um, well, he asks, you run a football academy now to develop talent. What obstacles have you faced as part of that? 
Um, first of all, I know a lot of these kids, they, they've been released from a lot of clubs and they're very damaged and confidence-wise and mentality-wise, they're damaged. First of all, I have to rebuild that, get them mentally tough because you're going to get knocked in life no matter what you do. And then when I think they're prepared, then I try and put them into clubs. But when I first started um, trying to get them into clubs, it was really, really hard. It's, it took for me to have a few successes for people to start answering the phone to me now and giving me a chance and giving the players a chance. Mm. Well, that's my questions are, uh, answered. Thank you very much. I'll hand it back over to Paul again <laughs> if, if he's got any more. No problem. Yeah, I, I wanted to touch on... Um, so your life before football, Jamie, and obviously I, I know you spent a little bit of time in, in prison um, and you described yourself um, in an interview with, uh, with the Daily Mail as a, a one-man crime wave. Um, how yeah. big an impact, when you look back now, has, has, did that have on you? Well, um, what happened in my life, like, my mum and dad went back to Jamaica when I was 17, come from um, Battersea, South London. Um, and then obviously I was trying to work, but the money I was getting, I had to pay rent, and I never had no money. And the only way I knew was to um, end up start doing crime. Um, I got three years first. I, I got um, parole first time, come out after three months, then I got arrested again. I got four years, which turned out to be the um, saviour of me. I um, come into contact with a prison officer called Mr. Walder who actually said to me that he thought that I had ability and he thought that I could be a professional footballer. The prison then started letting me out every weekend to play for a semi-professional side. And um, teams started coming to watch me. At that time now, then I was thinking that if they believe in me, I'll start believing in myself. And teams started watching me come out, had a few trials, and then ended up um, having a trial at Sunderland. And... Um, signing at Sunderland which turned out to be the best thing I could have done at the time I've got a big um, thanks for Mr Walder and Dale Young from the Isle of Wight for taking a chance on me that, That's great to hear that you obviously had su such a massive impact on you, on, on you as a person I'm sure you, you, you put that message across to the, to the guys at the Football Academy as well Yeah I do because a lot of them as well like, they come from inner cities and they think that there's no chance for them to make anything of their, of their life and all that. And they'll bang on and bang on to them that I never made it until 23. And I made it from a place where I thought I was going to be in crime for the rest of my life. But I managed to turn my life around. But And if you put hard work into anything, what you're doing, you can turn your life around. I completely agree. I mean, as, as Mike said, you've you sort of answered all of our questions tonight and all the listeners' questions. Um, and um, it's a real success story, your life, um, and hopefully it is only going to carry on getting better. And hopefully, you know, you, you'll agree to come back on the show if you do get that uh, dream manager's job as well. No, I definitely will, because my, my, my dream is obviously I want to go back to Bradford and manage. And I think everyone in life has got to have that dream. You reach for the stars and that every day you've got to. Well, it's been, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, Jamie. I'm sure Mike agrees with me. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. And uh, thanks very much for, uh, for for giving your time up tonight. As I say, hopefully you'll come back on again in the future. I will do, mate. You take care of yourself. Thanks, thanks very much, Jamie. Cheers, Jamie. Thanks, mate.